They say when you wear Black Power Media gear, you can accomplish anything. You play any and every position. Coaching, to kicking, to receiving, to running and juking. And, oh, my goodness. Let's see that again in slow motion. Get off me. Ah. And you're going to have a lot of haters coming at you. But what you got to do is you got to shake them off. Shake them off and get to your goal and accomplish it. And when that's done, it's a beautiful thing. I'm talking about going hard, extra, for that extra point. And when it's done beautifully, you're talking about touchdown. Oh, and the crowd goes wild and they're celebrating with you and everything. Man, let's see that again. Nice. Black Power Media, baby. That's how we do it. Now go to blackpowermedia.org and get you some of that gear. Power yourself today. Yep. Yeah. Yes, what's up, world? Welcome to another special edition, Saturday edition of I Mix What I Like right here at Black Power Media. Jared Ball, Dr. Todd Stephen Burroughs, remixers, like, share, subscribe, jump on in, invite others to join us this morning. You don't want to miss this good stuff if you're seeing this later. Peace and welcome to you as well. Todd, I feel like you owe me an apology. Go right ahead. You made me read... I won't claim I read this whole thing, but you made me read. I'm 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 half in a bad mood this morning because of this this book. And, well, well, um, but you know, I'm gonna I let will, you. See. Yeah, go ahead, man. I will give you an apology. I will give you an apology. Um, <laughs> audience, we have so much to say about this book. We can't even play around with our normal jumping. So look, here's how well the real reason for that. The real yeah. reason for that, and I know yeah. you need some time at the top, sure. but the real reason for sure. that. Happy African Liberation Day, everybody, as well. Yeah. By the way, shout out to those who are celebrating it appropriately. Unfortunately, I will not uh, because we have to. I got. We have to wrap a little earlier than normal. Usually, we wrap before one o'clock for Warrior class. We have to wrap just a little bit before that. Because baby girl has a, a, a dance recital today, Wonderful. and I got to take her over there uh, a little bit before one o'clock Eastern time. So uh, uh, that's my semi time crunch. But but and I'll have to watch Warrior Class another time. I won't be able to catch it live today, unfortunately. But anyway, all right. You that's said, said we Welcome an everybody. Hour and a half, yeah. We can get an hour and a half out of this. We got at least. We'll get at least an hour and a half. Oh yeah, but, that's good. No, that's uh, good. Know. Hour and a half. Hour and a half is sufficient. Okay, look. All right. Good. Good morning, everybody. Look, um, I have a lot to say about this, and and I want to first thank Dr. Ball because I refuse to write this. Good. And because You're I welcome, refuse everybody. to write about this book, it's been bothering me the whole week, and I've been writing notes and writing notes and writing notes. So I have all the I have like four pages of notes, right? I'm not even going to be able to get to everything that I want to say, but mm -hmm. what's important to me is that I take about 10 to 15 minutes to set the context for Ng, and then I'm going to do five minutes of Ng, and then Dr. Ball and I are going to go back and forth until it's time for him to go. And look, here's why I need this 15 minutes, audience, and I have to beg your patience. Somewhere there's going to be somebody who's going to turn 15, 16, 17, 18, and they're going to find this video. And I want them to know things that I didn't know at 15, 16, 17, 18. When I'm about to lay out this, this last 15 minutes, I had to learn this myself. It wasn't in a book. It wasn't in a class. I had to do this by spending literally 30 years, more than 30 years, reading every King biography that's been written since 1970. 
So I have a lot to say about biography and King and all of that. So I'm going to ask for this 15 minutes. Now, audience, a lot of this stuff is going to be obvious to you because of your politics. I'm going to ask you politely that if that's the case, you know, as YouTubers say, go get a snack, you know, like and subscribe first. Go get a snack, go get something to drink, okay? And then, you know, go to the bathroom that you can come back in time for the fire that's going to happen between the two of us over this thing, right? Because there's going to be fire, but it's going to happen in about 15 minutes, all right? So I wanted to throw that out. So let me jump in right away. Okay, let's first talk about the nature of biography. There are three things I want to discuss before, before I go into Ng and then Dr. Ball and I'll talk. First thing is the nature of biography. The second thing is I'm going to have to take an interlude to tell an important story that is very important to this. And the third thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, have to give you a commentary on all of the King biographies written since 1970, which I'm not a King scholar, but I am a lover of biography. So I am quasi qualified to at least give my analysis of these books. And as someone who's edited, you know, biography himself has had it published. I, I feel a little bit qualified to do that. So after I do those three things, then I will do five minutes of ing that will make sense to this 15 year old that I'm thinking of right now. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. So let's jump in. I'm not a historian in terms of having degrees in history, but I am a journalism historian. So I'm going to give my highly interpretive comments about the nature of history, the nature of biography, et cetera. There are roughly two types of history. There is quote unquote serious history, which is kind of scientifically based and kind of boring, right? And then there's narrative history, which attempts to engage the audience by being very scholarly at its best, not all the time, but at its best, right? So those are the two types of history. The history I read is the narrative history. You can tell them back at me, like I'm, I'd be bored with scientific stuff, right? I want, I want heroes, I want villains, I want excitement, right? As you see behind me, right? Okay. So you know the kind of bias that I have toward the reading of history. Biography is an offshoot of narrative history. It is narrative history for the most part for the masses, okay? It's narrative history about great men, great women, et cetera, that attempt to explain the historical moment or a historical moment from the point of view of one person, right? So by its very nature, it's, it's an interesting part of history because it fragments history into this one particular story, which we could argue is by itself a distortion, right? Because people are connected and society interacts with, with human beings in very complex ways. And biographers are giving an account from this one particular perspective, right? Now, I love narrative biography. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But I love good narrative biography, all right? So let me go to my notes on biography and see if I can hit some things quickly before we go to the, the second part of this 15 minutes. Now, um, since biography is part of narrative history, biographers do a lot of work. Um, if they choose to do what is called a quote unquote definitive biography, which we're going to get into, but they also can decide because it's narrative history and it's kind of like the, the bastard child of narrative history, they can decide to kind of do what they want, kind of tell the expanded story that they want, right? Now, narrative history and its subset biography, the writers are normally either historians or journalists. Now, there's a major difference between our historian writes a biography and writes narrative history and the way a journalist does. And Jonathan Eag is a journalist, and that's very important to remember in terms of, of what we're about to discuss. The way a historian writes a biography is a historian looks at a person's life, finds all the people who interact and intersect with that life, 
goes and does all the primary source research, meaning they go to all the paper collections of everybody this person's interacted with. Like they literally find every piece of paper that interacts with, with his or her, you know, the subject, his or her. They do all the, the background research of the towns and the cities they live in. If they're FBI files, they go through all the FBI files of a person, right? A, a historian is, is trying to create biography as a legitimate work of narrative history, right? So that's how a historian approaches it. A journalist approaches it as little more than a magazine assignment in which they read everything about the person and they uh both both narrative both narrative historians and, and journalists do interviews right so they do a lot of interviews and and they kind of construct this story and you know they they may include some footnotes they may do some research you know but they're not doing the kind of massive research that a a trained narrative historian does right so you get you get these two kind of portraits. You get a, a scholarly portrait that puts the person at its best in historical context. And then you get the journalistic profile that gives you a narrative about the person. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. So that's pretty much the discussion of biography, but there's one thing I want to add. When a narrative historian does a quote unquote definitive biography, what that means is that they've done all the research on everything you can find on this person and they put this in a massive one volume or two volumes, or in the case of Taylor Branch and Martin Luther King, three volumes, right? So then what happens after you publish the quote unquote definitive biography? Does that mean that that's the last word on the person? No, we know that because there are all sorts of political books and other books that go beyond the, the quote unquote definitive biography. But we also know that things come out, papers come out, research comes out that the quote unquote definitive biography doesn't have. And so what happens then, right? Does the, does the person who does the definitive biography go back and do another version of the biography with all the new research? No, no, they don't do that. What happens is somebody else picks up the torch and either decides to do another definitive biography and include all of this research or just emphasize the new research and use the new research to tell a quote unquote new story about the subject. Now, that's what Jonathan Eag did. So I wanted to point that out. Now, let me check and make sure that, oh, here's some other things about biography. Okay, good. In theory, biographies are supposed to be about significance, not an exercise in hero worship. But most biographers are not going to spend years writing about people they dislike. But there are examples of that. I mean, Arnold Rampersand, one of the top black biographers in the country, he wrote a scathing uh, biography of Ralph Ellison. I mean, if Ralph Ellison wasn't such an asshole, I'd have felt bad for him uh, reading this book on Ralph Ellison because Rampersand did not leave any negative thing that Ellison did out. Every negative thing he found, he used. And, and it was a clear, you know, point of view, but it was also a very clear portrait of the man. Like, he wasn't the greatest guy in the world. And so Rapperson had no problem taking him down using the, the biography method and using the historical method. Now, you know I'm a geek, so I'm going to talk about Abraham Rison's biography on Stan Lee, which is called True Believer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Reisman found every negative thing Stan Lee did, and Stan Lee did a lot of negative things in terms of how he treated Jack Kirby and Steve Dicto, and basically what he was like as a personality. And he decided to write a whole book saying that Stan Lee was nothing but a charlatan and a showman. And I mean, it was just harsh, harsh stuff on Stan Lee, right? And another uh, example that that uh, is the um, exception to this rule of, of, you know, people liking who they write about. 
I mean, basically, you wouldn't be surprised if this applies to any biography of Adolf Hitler, right? Okay. But with those exceptions aside, writers, whether they're narrative historians or whether they're journalists who spend years studying about a person, you get the implicit bias within that task, right? So that's why many biographies are what's called a sympathetic portrait, right? Because you identify with the person so much, right? And you start thinking about how much you like the person, and then you start writing from this perspective. And that's why a lot of these biographies of people we would be very critical of are very sympathetic, right? Okay, now, let's see if there's any other notes about biography that we need before I go into the interlude. All right, give me a moment, audience. I really appreciate you and your patience in this. Okay, I think I'm done with that first part. So now let me go to the second part. This is kind of an interlude uh, before we get to the, the analysis of all the books, uh, biographies that have been written on King since his death. So a very simple interlude. And again, this is very obvious to you, but it won't be obvious to the 15 year old. So again, I appreciate your indulgence. The West is dominated by a very specific narrative, a narrative about a Palestinian carpenter who read, challenged the authorities of his day, both religious and otherwise, was captured and was crucified. According to, right, the greatest story you ever told. Some people put the emphasis on greatest. <laughs> Some people put the emphasis on story. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't want to get in trouble. Now, particularly here where I live in Newark, where everybody's either born again Christian or a former nation of Islam <laughs> Muslim. But this narrative is very significant because it is the dominant narrative that allows people to interact within the West. And particularly when we deal with the fact that this idea of having the, the rabbi, the carpenter, the spiritual leader and his disciples, right? And the relationship with the disciples so we have all of these kind of kind of uh, frameworks, and and in the case of the story of Jesus, there was an honorary female disciple, right, Mary Magdalene, right? Okay, keep keep that in mind as we go forward. So this narrative influences a lot of people who, if they're writers, they're kind of artists. And artists and writers, you know, love great stories and to have great stories as, you know, anybody who's done any reading of Joseph Campbell will tell you, requires a great hero. So writers are always looking for heroes, always looking for heroes. And if we're talking about American publishing, commercial publishing, or we, and by commercial publishing, I mean both narratives for the masses and for textbooks, et cetera, it is natural to gravitate toward a heroic story, particularly of one man, right? Who, by the very nature of his activity, recreates the world. All right. So when we add that to the idea that the biographers are sympathetic to the topic, we then get something that borderlines worship. Now, in terms of the American construct, the three figures that I think biographers are most obsessed with are the carpenter, Abraham Lincoln, and Martin Luther King. Because these three people recreate the world, right? You, you split the world in half. There was a time before them and then there was a time after them. And the time after them is 
so much better than the time before them. And so this becomes a kind of a subconscious quest, if that makes sense. Now, do I have any proof on that? Well, let's see. I've learned how to use ChatGPT, and I'm very, very afraid of ChatGPT, let me say. But according to ChatGPT, to give you some proof here, there are at least 15,000 books written about Abraham Lincoln. ChatGPT couldn't give me exact numbers for uh, Jesus, uh, but they said there were thousands of books written specifically about Jesus, right? And the only person that is kind of like in third place, if we're talking about this, this biography list or books about a certain person, you wouldn't be surprised to know that the third person is admittedly the greatest writer in the English language, and that's William Shakespeare. All right? So now you have an idea of the structure of historical narrative and biography, and you have an idea of how the biographer thinks in terms of the American construct. And we can mostly say American, you know, 20th century construct. So when the biographer is looking for heroes, they're looking for heroes that they can identify with. Now, Mahatma Gandhi, with all his faults, I mean, he didn't become a, a Pan-Africanist until much later in life. We know early in life he was a racist, right? I, I'm a Gandhi and I fully admit that. Gandhi is too alien for the white male biographer, right? He's another guy in another country uh, with a whole other culture. I mean, to, to do serious biography on him, you'd have to learn Hindi and some, all these other languages. And you have to learn about this culture. And, and white males, you know, unless they feel like doing that, they don't really want to do that, do all of that, right? So it's easier to find somebody close at home with a very historic narrative and tie that narrative into the larger Western narrative. So now let me get to the third part of what I wanted to say. And then I'm gonna go into Ng, and then Dr. Ball and I will talk and I'll use as much many notes as I can uh, during our conversation. So now we get to books about Martin Luther King, all right? There are one, two, three, four King biographers. If we're talking about biography, not books about King, biography, books that attempt to construct his life using historical resources and, and interviews, historical sources and resources and interviews. So let me go through all the biographies very quickly and give you my like one sentence analysis of all of them. And then I'll get to my basic comments on Aang and then Dr. Ball and I will go back and forth. The first biography written by uh, about Martin Luther King since his death was done by David Levin Lewis. It was called King, A Critical Biography. Uh, Lewis was a young guy then. Uh, by the way, Dr. Ball, he was at Morgan State, by the way. If you get the original hardcover, you will see in the back jacket a picture of him in a dashiki and in an afro, and it says he's at Morgan State. And so Lewis does this kind of middle-class portrait, this black middle-class portrait. He's he's not very impressed with King's intellectualism, by the way, you know. So he, he does this kind of first draft, kind of outlining the life and from a very kind of black middle class bourgeois perspective. So he does that. It's a good book. I mean, they're all good books for what they do, for what they do. And that's the important part here. Then we get Stephen B. Oates, Let the Trumpet Sound, The Life of Martin Luther King Jr. That was published in 1982. Oates is a Southern historian, a Southern biographer. And to him, King is the completion of the American South, the recreation of the United States after the Civil War. And Oates does this book, I mean, as you see from the title, Let the Trumpet Sound, uh, you see he does this from the kind of Christian perspective, right? Okay. Which makes sense if you're writing about a Christian minister, that does make sense that you would take that as the framework. Okay. Then there's David Garrell, Bearing the Cross, Martin Luther King, and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And that was published in 1986. Garrell, who is not a stylist, but he is a master historian. 
He does a week by week development of the real man and the real work. It's the closest thing to a definitive political biography of King. It's a lot to read, but if you want to read what King was doing literally week to week during that 13 years of his engagement in the movement, Garrow's book had been the standard for a very, very long time. Then a journalist decides that he wants to do the hardcore historical work and create the definitive biography of Martin Luther King. So Taylor Branch does a three volume series on King and the three volume series is called America in the King Years. And the three books are Parting the Waters, published in 1988, Pillar of Fire, published in 1998, and the third and last volume at Canaan's Edge, published in 2006. And so he tries to do the real hard work. Uh, Taylor Branch, uh, he's, he's gotten a lot of criticism for this series because he basically never met an antidote he didn't like. And so if people just lied to him and told him all these stories, he would just take it and use it. Like he used all the historical research, but he also used basically every story he was told. And he did not vet the stories to see whether they were true or not. All right. So, but to Branch, King is America's last founding father. The one bridging America from the past to the present. Now, there are two things I want you to remember from this from this spot. I want you to remember that David Levin Lewis is the only black person to do a full King biography. And I want you to remember what I said about Stephen B. Oates. So with a definitive biography done, what's there left to do? Well, there's a lot left to do because Ng's book is the first biography since that last volume of Taylor Branch. It's been 17 years since 2006. So he's incorporating new information and he's using the new information as a journalist, as a stylist, to tell from his point of view, a new story about King that does not supplant, does not replace any of the other books but gives you like the new version, the new simple Wikipedia type version using this new research. All right, so having said all of that, let me, let me do a quick one, two minutes about what I think of Ng, and then you know, Dr. Paul and I can go back and forth on this. And I, and I have already demonstrated that my review will be shorter than yours. Yeah, I, I, I saw that review, right? <laughs> And it was a good one too. You know, I was looking for your video, but I didn't understand. It was like it was like the uh, the graphic. That was great. That was great, by the way. I'm, I'm gonna show it here in a second, just in case. Show it in a second. So, anybody happened to? No, I'm just playing. Go ahead. So, what is Martin Luther King to Jonathan Ng? Well, very simply, he takes King and goes full force and basically portrays him as America's Jesus. And he's so clear on that, he puts in the acknowledgments. The acknowledgments starts with a story of him talking to Dick Gregory. And Dick Gregory asks him, what's the difference between Martin Luther King and Jesus Christ? And Jonathan Ng says, I don't know. Dick Gregory says, we have no documentation that Jesus Christ actually lived. But we have all this film, all this audio, all this writing on Martin Luther King. And that's, and that's the difference. And he takes that and he creates an entire book out of that, right? And so very, very quickly, I just want to list the new things in this book. Uh, and then, and then we can, we can go and have a discussion. So what, what's the new info? Okay. I, I have a little list of the new info. The new is, is definitely outdone by the old though. I Check it out. That. And that's Go that's ahead. excellent. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. So let me let me say, let me talk about the new material and then the the new material and then the new info in the narrative. So here's the new material. He did 200 interviews that he did personally, which which are now added to the dozens of civil rights movement 
oral histories, interviews, and archives and libraries, right? The civil rights movement has now become one of the most documented movements in American history. He says there are tens of thousands of new documents, FBI memos, transcripts, and there's the unofficial archive that one of King's lieutenants, uh, L.D. Reddick, kept an archive. And so, so he used he used Reddick's archive. This is also the first bio since the expanse of web databases, newspaper databases. I mean, remember how remember how databases were in 2006? Of course, we got a lot of improvements since then. So he uses a lot of newspaper articles that normally somebody would not use. And that's that's another way to be new, quote unquote. Probably the most important thing about the Ng book is that Coretta finally gets justice in this narrative. She is portrayed correctly as a King co-counsel and a social visionary of her own. And he uses, you know, Coretta's audio tapes from her own memoir and, and, a, and, a, and a solid, you know, new bio by the Black journalist, Barbara Reynolds, who published a, a book on Coretta uh, a few years ago and as told to uh, bio. And my godfather Tom Porter, as he said here, uh, was tempted to 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 he considered becoming litigious over the way he <laughs> he was falsely recounted in that book. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, man, the way people are in these books, I mean, it's it's hard because you know how do you respond if you don't write your own book? There's like no way to respond. It's it's a difficult thing. So more new information. So he's using new bios of Rosa Parks. He's using new release recordings from LBJ and Kennedy. He's using stuff from LBJ's secretary. He's using unpublished auto bio manuscripts of Martin Luther King Sr. Although I don't know how that really worked because I mean, Martin Luther King Sr. had a biography as told to autobiography out, but he claims that. And he also claims that he used unpublished auto bio manuscripts of Ralph Abernathy and Hosea Williams. So all of this adds up to new accounts of old stories. And by example, one example I say is King's plagiarism. Okay, almost done folks. So what's the new info in this book? What's new that you don't know about Martin Luther King or that, or that you don't know in the detail that Ng has it? Well, it might be interesting or might not for you to know that when Gone with the Wind premiered in Atlanta, Martin Luther King Sr. was involved in that premiere and his choir sang and in that choir was young Martin Luther King Jr. Probably he was Michael probably back then. And all of the Ebenezer choir was dressed as a slave, just as slaves. So Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> is dressed as a slave in the front row singing. Okay, that's that's one. All right. So the kitchen sink, the kitchen scene, that very famous you know description where we talk about King uh, hearing a voice. Uh, in his kitchen and then getting up and then being brave and all of that. So he he kind of he kind of uh, de-dramatizes that story. He doesn't say it didn't, ha didn't happen, but he kind of de-dramatizes that story. And he also de-dramatizes by omission the India trip where allegedly Martin Luther King was flying back on a plane and debating, okay, should I wear Western clothes? Maybe it was a mistake to not have a family. We appreciate the research. Thank you. Thank all you. right, so, so you do that. Uh, it says that Coretta was much more involved in the movement, as I said, much more top counsel to King than previously known. Uh, King may have written more and Levinson less. Stanley Levinson, his white uh, socialist slash communist aide, who was his ghostwriter, uh, so he may have written more because Ng doesn't kind of go into that particular part of the relationship. Um, no, in fact, at one point he says that Levinson got mad at King because he said the Riverside Church was too much, uh, too, 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 attempting to do too much and was, and he blamed King's speechwriters. So he was mad at King for li listening to someone else, apparently. And that's, that's an interesting part of the dynamic. It also, this also book also points out that Bayard Rustin was also a King ghostwriter for some articles. Now I didn't I didn't know that. That was that was new for me. Um, they finally used the name of the young woman he was in love with at Crozier when he was he wanted to marry the uh, daughter of the president of the White uh, Seminary. He was studying at to get his master's, Amelia Elizabeth Mo Moitz, and they finally revealed the name of the Black Atlanta woman he was supposed to marry, Juanita Sellers. Now, um, at the March on Washington, it was Martin who inspired Mahalia to say, tell her about the dream, Martin, not the other way around. He, he, used, he 
use the original recording to find that. How does that work? Um, he talked about he listened to the original recording, and you don't hear Mahalia say, tell her about the dream, Martin, until after he's already made his mind up to do that. That's what Ng argues. Now, um, also, we get a history that I didn't need about Martin Luther King Sr., who was also a serial cheater. Um, there are more details on stories we know about the FBI harassment. And, you know, Ng uh, has no problem actually using where there was some point where King, like, literally called up all of his girlfriends. <laughs> and we got to hear, you got to read part of those conversations. Uh, we know about the insertion of the text that was critical. We talked about that with the Playboy interview. And we know about Martin, well, we didn't know that Martin Luther King wrote a couple articles. He wrote articles for the Maroon Tiger at Morehouse, a couple articles for the Black Press. Now, the most important thing, like if, if this thing with the Alex Haley thing hadn't broke, the most important thing that would have been discussed would have been this. Now, you notice I, I, I talked about it that interlude, this narrative, this Western narrative about the Palestinian carpenter. And I mentioned that there was a female, you know, person who was almost a disciple, Mary Magdalene, right? Well, Ng, in his American Jesus story, identifies the Mary Magdalene, right? Who is the woman? We know about the woman who was the uh, first black state senator in Kentucky, because uh, she wrote a book called I Shared the Dream, right? Uh, Georgia Douglas, if I have that right, I'm thinking off the top of my head. But we don't know about this woman that was so close to King that even the journalists saw and Abernathy had to call him on it and all of that. And, you know, who was the woman that after King cursed everybody out and told Jesse and them, you know, I feel you have your own agenda or whatever. He cursed everybody out. Then he went to go see his girlfriend, according to Garrow. We didn't know who this person was. Well, I guess enough time has passed. Enough people have died. So this Mary Magdalene, so who was King's Mary Magdalene, right? Uh, her, his sexual Mary Magdalene. That has been ID'd as Dorothy Cotton. Right? And that was a little shocking to me because I've met Dorothy Cotton. <laughs> I've been at a King program with Dorothy Cotton at, at Seton Hall. So that was, a, that was a little shocking to me, right? But this is... This trust is me, trust me. You, you've met plenty of people who have had flings with plenty of people, whether you've been aware of it or not. Right. In and out of the movement. So, right. I mean... Right, You so know, so again... Is, this is the new information, and this new information, I want. I want to take one of Doctor Car. I want Doctor Car. Doctor Balls. Uh, that was a Freudian. I want to take one of Doctor Balls. Uh, uh, sticks, and point out who's on the back cover as the blurbs. Let's take a look. Ken Burns. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Isn't that? Isn't that? Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that on the, um, oh, damn. It's not on the, the, the Kindle copy. Oh you, oh, you don't know? Oh, let me help you out, Dr. Ball. I'm so happy to help you. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted to pull it up. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not on the Kindle copy. Go ahead, man. <laughs> oh, these Bamas, these slick, these slick. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Do you want yes, to do it? yes, yes. Ken Burns. David Garrow. Uh, Jean Theorsis, who's the, the uh, theologian and activist who has, who's done some books on the oh movement. Oh, my God. And your favorite historian, Dr. Ball, Peniel. Ah, no, they didn't. They hit us with the penny trick. Are you they serious? Hit us with the penny oh trick. Oh, my God. That's even better than I realized. This is perfect. All right, so okay, no, so, wait, wait, don't don't say another word because go right ahead. <laughs> that is perfect for as a segue to my review, which go right case, ahead for those you know because you know because I'm I now done. I'm now done. I'm now done. Well, go right this ahead. is it. That's it, and it's perfect because this is exactly what Peniel does to Kwame Ture in Stokely a life. So it's perfect. So we get King a life. And Stokely, A Life, written by Peniel Joseph, both do the exact same thing. Uh, both have the exact same political perspective. Both do the exact same erasing of the context of the state, the state's oppression. And this book may be even the most slick version of that that I've ever seen. Um, 
because uh, uh, as I made a note here, you get in Eeg's book, you get all kinds of discussion of J. Edgar Hoover and even reference to William Sullivan. And they don't mention one word of the counterintelligence program. So you, you can perfectly fraudulently, and that has to be a, an intentional omission and the reason he does it is the exact same reason that Peniel does it to Kwame Ture in Stokely of Life, which is the minute you reference or put any real focus on the counterintelligence program, you immediately radicalize and internationalize the person who was the subject, and you immediately change the context that is the, 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 the purpose of these false narratives in the first place, which is to situate the United States as still some beacon of unique freedom in the you in the world in the universe that is only parenthetically interrupted by moments of colonization enslavement abuse rape pillaging etc and so forth so and then just like our our dear friend uh um um don king they can say only in america and do as he starts off the book on December 5th, 1955, a young black man became one of America's founding fathers. So, so a man that was this country's, among this country's most staunch and prolific critics, that this country sanctioned and participated in his assassination. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm sure there's a flaw in that sentence. Is now recast as a founding father, just as you pointed out, was done in 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 this tradition Branch. of these so, kinds of biologies. So his, bi his first sentence, his for Ing's first sentence is Branch's last paragraph. So, so I just, <laughs> so I just want to say again, most importantly, because this is what's ultimately most important here at Mix. What I like is that I was right about the <laughs> Peniel Penny trick going back now more than a decade in calling this dude out. And when people were saying, Jared, you're doing too much. Jared, you, why are you focused on this guy? I, my whole point even then was to say, because our gener he is going to be a generational problem. His co-signing, his presence is going to be a permanent generational problem that to your point, and I love the way you did it, he's talking to the 15 year olds. They're not talking to us. They know we know better. They know they can't run this nonsense on us. That's why you send 17-year-olds to war. <laughs> because once you hit 25 and older, I'm not getting shot up for this nonsense. Once you become 25 and older as a parallel intellectually to an understanding of this history, you're not going for this nonsense. So that, and it was already asked as a, um, thank you, Virgo Life, for your, your super chat. But I meant to raise this anyway. This is part of, this is a perfect question. What does he say about the tapes? I'm going to pull this up for you real quick. I, I see it. I'm going to give you the answer. The, the no, answer is. But, but Well, go ahead and give your answer. The I was, answer is when these tapes come out, I think in either 2027 or 2037, I forget the, the date, there'll be another biography on King. No, no, right? no. Look at what he does here, Todd. Go ahead. Look at how he ends the book, because this is how I read these books. I know when right. I know, especially when I'm not doing a real critique, like when we did right. with Marable. And I, right. I, I read the intro and I read the outro. And then as much time permits, I get into the middle of it. Go and ahead. you can see just in that what they're going to do. Go you ahead. see how they frame the book. And look at what he does right here. Look at what he does right here. 35 years later, when the FBI released thousands of pages from its secret files on King, no evidence emerged to suggest that communist operatives, operatives controlled or manipulated King. The documents did offer new details on his extramarital affairs, as well as on the emotional strain he endured. The biggest revelation contained in the FBI reports, however, may have been the extent and determination of the Bureau's campaign to thwart King and the degree to which the campaign was fueled by the personal obsessions of J. Edgar Hoover and President Johnson. This is some skillful and artful, complete and total fraudulent nonsense. And it is, it is this kind of slickness that does... I admit, infuriate me because what they're doing here, and this is exactly what they did in the Judas and the Black Messiah film regarding Fred Hampton. 
they will acknowledge something it's too big to omit right right but they contextualize it as a thing of hoover and president johnson not of the state not of a counterintelligence program which again goes unmentioned right. not of, uh, of 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 the the need of empire to destroy internal threats as right. he was wildly did. and and for all, with all due respect, and for all the the, the pettiness of of of, of uh, self promotion, my now near twenty because I was still in, in in at Maryland at the PhD pro my now twenty plus year presentation on what the press what the Washington Post did to Dr. King right destroys what this man does and his thousands of pages and hours of research in in, in discussing the media critique of King. Because the point is, even as he acknowledges the press hated on King, he does so outside of the context of their doing it because of his critique of imperialism, capitalism, right. his threat to the national security of the state, the, 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 the direction pointed at the state's support, if not right. participation in his assassination. They're, they're near calling for it. 90 days within in the Washington Post and the, before he's he's killed, calling him a threat to national security. His march is going to be taken over by the Leninists and Stokely Carmichael's victory of the power. This is them saying this dude is a, but he doesn't do that in here. But but he, let me let me say why, but let me say why. And let, and let me give. The why though is because this is something, and I just want to, this, let me, I'll stop here with this. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. This real quick. Yeah. The why, though, is because this man is an unqualified, well-platformed, promoted spokesperson for the history that this country wants to rebrand. Because he also does the history Qual of Ali. Right. He does Ali. He's a right. sports journalist. He's right. on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Right. There's, he's, he, writes mag he writes articles for Men's Health. Right, right. This is not, he writes books about Lou Gehrig. Right. This is not somebody who understands black history, right. African world history. He has not right. demonstrated any recognition of radical history or right. the movements that imp that inspired King, right. that were moving King. He doesn't right. understand. He doesn't understand right. communism or socialism or pan Africanism. He or at least he doesn't demonstrate any of that. Right. So so he's perfect for this. As was Peniel right. Joseph to become the founding father of black power studies and all this other nonsense that he self proclaimed at one point. Also that we get the 15 year olds who pick up King and because as you pointed out, this is about 20 years, 17, 20 years later, a new generation might right. wake up and say, hold up. Right. So anyway, I'll come back, you know, cause, cause when no, he no, looked, no, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do ahead. my invitation to you now though, because I'm going to go into my notes as to why, He's the perfect one, and I want to answer the question that I asked, which is why black people don't get to do these biographies. So let me let me find my my Dr. Ballish notes. Hold on. Well, they do. Time. They let Peniel do them. Well, yeah, but Peniel, I mean, you know, if you want to call what he does biography, I mean, it's not to me. To me, it's not thorough enough to be called that, right? But let me, but let me, let me do, let me do, uh, let me do my Dr. Ball here. All right, hold on. So. I, I got so much to say, but I got to go to the Dr. Ball part. Okay. In fact, wait, let me go up a little bit more. Hold on. Okay. King is soothing and inspiring for people who live vicariously through him because they can't and won't sacrifice anymore. His success and death purifies and baptizes, but not mobilizes which is okay for them because they don't want Gandhi, Chris Hani, Claudia Jones, Elaine Brown, or France Fanon, right? They seek to make, or at least seek, a leap of faith they won't make, right? And, you know, of course, I got to bring my popular culture uh, reference in. Think of Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade when Indy has to rescue his father and he, he has to go through these challenges. And one challenge is he has this chasm and he doesn't make a leap of faith, right? So he jumps and then he sees the bridge he's on, but he doesn't see the bridge until after he jumps, right? You know, and, and, and it's clear because, you know, Donovan, the character in there, it says, says uh, to Andy, you know, it's time to ask yourself what you believe, right? So in a risk averse society in which we're afraid to lose a job because we're afraid to lose middle-class status, right? 
it's hard to not view King and the Southern civil rights hero, activists as heroes with King as its superhero figurehead. This is what they really want. Now, why do they want that? Because this is my Dr. Ball part. They want a modern American Jesus to rally behind so they will continue telling the story the way they do with Jesus and Lincoln. Now, the contradiction of this is that they seek to do this while they really worship violent imperialists, those who gave them the comfort of time and privilege to worship and study ancient white holy men, such as St. Francis of Assisi and brown black modern men. This is the Western sickness led by the Catholic Church and followed by the white Protestant Church. So there's a there's a psychic need. It's not just political. Message. There's a psychic need to take these stories so that the West is redeemed. Because because what what do these writers want? Particularly these white writers, they want redemption for the United States, and they want redemption for the West. That's why they have to be white. That's why the majority of these people have to be white who do these stories. Or whether they have to King, tell the narr- the white narrative, which Peniel Joseph does whether perfectly it's King well. Or Ali, yeah. Because King and Ali mm-hmm. fit in mm-hmm. terms of their whole life. They fit. They had this rebel period, but mm-hmm. then they either die or they get ill. <laughs> right. And 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 their their grace, the grace they give. Allows white people to get not only forgiveness but redemption, right? Martin Luther King said that unearned suffering is redemptive, right? What the white people want is they want their earned, they want their earned implementation of suffering to be redemptive, and and that's what and that's what this is really about. And so you see how the spiritual connects to the politics, and King is the perfect person to play that game with. And that's why I keep calling it the penny trick, because the trick in all of this is to make reference to these folks and even seemingly revere them. But at the same time, completely erasing and rebranding all the radicalism that made them great and made them threats. So uh, um, that's how you could it is it is it is fraudulent for Peniel Joseph to write a book about Kwame Ture that abs- that does not make one word of reference to the man's own autobiography. Just as it's equally fraudulent for this EG book to not make one reference to the counterintelligence program that had referred to Dr. King as a threat of a becoming another messiah that specifically targeted him and engaged in in programs that we've even shown in terms of documents as they've direct were directed at Daruba and other Black Panthers. None of that is brought to bear on on this conversation. So that and then because again, by the book's end, the same thing Marable did to Malcolm. By the book's end, Malcolm becomes an Obama supporting Democrat. By this book's end, everything that was done to to King by the state is reducible to Hoover and President Johnson, as if, and again, with no discussion of the program and the operation that even William, again, even in my own 25-year-old presentation, I showed what William Sullivan actually said about Dr. King in his, uh, uh, where Eag only, after the 1963 March on Washington speech, where Eag only makes reference to the fact that William Sullivan became a little bit concerned or became concerned at the, you know, but he doesn't say what he said and he doesn't engage in a discussion of what they did in, de- in developing a targeted program to destroy him. Uh, so, so William Sullivan is, is left out of Eag's book as having said that King has now become the, the biggest threat in, in bringing the Negro to communism and in relation to uh, uh, that being a concern over uh, a, a connection of the black liberation struggle and the Cuban revolution. This is what Sullivan says. Castro, of course, is mentioned in Eag's book. The March on Washington is, of course, mentioned. King being a threat or a fear for Sullivan is even mentioned. But none of it is put together. None of it is is tied together in a way that would 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 make clear to a reader no, the problem for for King and other for and others like him was that they were moving in a, in a radical political direction that would be relevant for you in your time, young child, <laughs> young reader. 
but we don't want you to think of it that way. We don't ever want you to consider it, which was specifically the, the goal, one of the tenets, the bullet points listed in the counterintelligence program in which King was specifically named as a target. That is, we don't want black youth, tenet number five, we don't want black youth picking up black radical politics. We don't want them, and, and, and King is a problem in that regard, as was Stokely. So now we're going to get, so so I'm assuming next we're going to get uh, uh, a similarly styled biography. We're going to get, we're going to get uh, Elijah Muhammad, a life, because he was named in that as well. Uh, we're going to get, uh, um, Marable did Malcolm, Peniel did Stokely, this guy did King. We need Elijah Muhammad. I think who else was specifically named on that page? I think that might be it, actually. So we need to get, we're going to get Elijah Muhammad, a life. And maybe, I don't know, we'll get passing reference to the Nation of Islam in that book. <laughs> we'll get everybody a life. But let me let me go back to my notes to because it, it matches what you're saying. So hold on, let me go back to my notes here. So I say, why, why this mid-21st century need to do this, right? Many reasons, but one is that the reader needs someone to symbolically fight white right-wing American Christian nationalists who as we have seen until they started to go to jail, have been willing to physically confront their enemies. The well-funded right has ex-future president, ex and future president Donald Trump on down, Fox News, which is now the right's most conservative and professional news outlet, right? Former generals such as Michael Flynn, state house people doing all this crazy stuff, think tanks, local organizations, da 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 da. And we on the left only have Reverend Barber, Angela Davis and some elite college professors, you know, and I mentioned them, Claude, West, Kelly, Taylor, you know, Yamada Taylor. We have some filmmakers and journalists, but all who, all who have made sure they scare absolutely no one, except that one time when Mark Lamont Hill, when he almost got fired, uh, attacking Israel, the United, United Nations, right? The ironic thing is that if we're honest about King, this is what King wanted to be. King wanted to be Eddie Glaude. King wanted to be Cornell West, right? Ironically, whoa, whoa, no, we got to be honest about that. We've got to be honest whoa. about that. I don't, all King said I, his entire life, all he said his entire life was he wanted a few years as a pastor, and then he wanted to go be president of Morehouse. If King had had his way, we'd have never heard of him. Because that's all he wanted to do. Oh, you talking about at the beginning? You talking no, about at the beginning? That, but, but when you read no, 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 all no. the books, no. But see, I've read all the books. Even when he's uh, alcoholic and he's up uh, and he's depressed, near suicidal, he still talks about all I ever wanted to be was a college professor. All I all ever I wanted to be back then. Now I realize I want more and can't be that and can't settle for that. Which is why he yells at Andy Young. I'm a revolutionary, <laughs> you know, you're a capitalist, I'm not. I want a revolution, you don't. That's, that. come on now, Todd, come on, man, you can't. King, I, he, King, went at the King, King, at the beginning, at the King, beginning. No, no, I'm talking about a, King at the end. I, I've read all the books. I'm talking about King at the you, end. At King, you, King, King at I, the I, end. And I've read one King or two, but end, he said, but what, even what you just King said. Is, at the is, end was an American until he died. He was an American. He may have been, now there's an argument and you were in, you were in a panel, you're in an excellent panel with Mark Lamont Hill over the argument whether he was a democratic socialist or a social democrat, right? And that was an excellent discussion. But King at the end was an American. He talked about the, to the end, he talked about the American dream. He Todd, was, he was Todd, radical. he did not. He talked about it being a nightmare. Todd, he talked right. about capitalism. No, no, he's right. already to, no, he's already to the left of almost every name you mentioned by the fact that he was not programmatically willing to go along with beyond the critiques were, that are similar with Robin Kelly sure. West yet T Taylor. He was not willing to support the Democratic Party. He was he was wanting to engage in programmatic activism, direct civil be div nonviolent direct action sure. in which rents were redistributed, permanent encampments of, of protesters were left. Again, sure. this is not you sure. can, again, that is decidedly not what those who you are saying are 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 his uh, political kinmates that they are the 
my point is what they do more than more than anything is falsely claim that air to be the heir to that. Well, I agree with that. Well, or are falsely presented by others as the I agree with that. They're not the same, though. You're saying that they're the same and that all King wanted was to be Yamada Taylor and Robin Kelly. That's that is demonstrably false, though. I'm saying that King would have been happy being in that role and not being an activist. That was true in the Back beginning. Back in 1950. That, no, yeah. that was true in the beginning. And and in the end, he felt obligated to complete that at the end. I'm, I'm but just Todd, saying. But wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. But George Jackson even said, all I want to do is be here to love and gratify the body. Sure. But my recognition, my political analysis now moves me to something else. Sure. I'm saying, I'm even on a much lower level saying the same thing. I don't even want to take the analysis I have. Sure. I don't want the punishment... I've suffered just at a way reduced level. I don't even want that. Sure. But it's irrelevant to what I think is necessary now. King is very clear about that. And I don't understand. So so you I, I think that that distinction has to be made clear. And I'm glad you're making it, but I'm just pointing out that the inner yearnings of the man contradicts what he what he felt he had to do. Because I agree with you. Because look, look, I don't I teach Martin Luther King scholars at Seton Hall. I don't use any of these books. You know what I use? I use the one book that all the radicals like and that they should like, which is what? Where do we go from here? Chaos or community? Where and King let's talk outlined... about how that book was talked about in here real quick. Yeah, let's do that. Because because it wasn't, <laughs> right, <laughs> which is right. more evidence <laughs> of the fraudulence of this book. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, and I have, oh man, I, no, I can't, of course, I, I'm going to find the note. Uh the point is the book the book is the book is really only mentioned to to talk about the criticism it got not right. based not to talk about what its actual arguments were this is part of the slick hustle that me, has let become me point out while you, while you this, this brand it's right, it's right here it's right well go ahead but it's i just it's, want to point out very quickly this, this is the point that, that you will like i want to point <laughs> out that you know People forget that the night before he died, he was calling for a boycott of Coca-Cola and steel test milk. So it's important to mention and that supporting he was, striking sanitation workers, sanitation workers again, right. again, right. again. So he left begins of and everybody ends, you mentioned. Okay, so he begins and ends his official political life with economic boycotts, and I think it's important to say that because that's never said. Wait a minute. No. See, this is part of my prop. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The framing of that is entirely wrong. Go ahead. And this is the point of why, where do we go from here? Not being discussed in this book is part of the fraudulence of, of the, of the writing of the narrative. If you, because in that book, he's very clear. Boycotts don't work. Buying power doesn't work. What is required is an actual revolution where the state gets involved in, in planning the redistribution of the wealth this society creates. He's very clear. He may have He's, said that in the book, but the night before he died, that speech that ends with I've been to the mountaintop, he calls for a boycott of Coca-Cola. Of course. Well. He's not saying, again, but my point is, but yes. my point is to divorce the tactic from the overall philosophy is the problem. Okay, because what going. ends up okay. happening in the 21st century is that people say, oh, well, all we have to do is just this boycott. We should just boycott. And that and what King is saying is no. And that's why they keep even today going back to the Montgomery boycott. People will come back to this book and, and rebrand what, what in terms of what you just said, what King was doing the night before he was killed. OK, to, to, to say that he was an advocate of boycotts as the final solution. Or maybe that's a bad choice of phrasing there, but. But his, <laughs> as, 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 as an ultimate solution. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's better. Right, right. <laughs> My yeah, bad. I, I, but, I think that's a little better. Right. But maybe it's because I, I looked up the, the, the ownership of the publisher of this book, and it does go back to Germany. Maybe that's, that's what's right. in the back of my mind. But the Holzberg group or whatever, it's, it's, it it's Germans. It's the, it it's the, the Germans. But, 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 but my point is, tactically... Of okay. course, he was there, and and Eeg even talks about in this book okay. how uh, uh, he was invited to Memphis. How right. you know he was you know he's going again. Any of us would do the same thing. All okay. of us do the same thing. We right. all support tactics or or actions that we're not thinking are the 
the ultimate end all be all, but right. we, the people are good people. We're, we're invited. We go do it. So of course King is going to go down there and say, I support the striking workers here. I support a boycott against this there. Yeah. But when it came to producing a written analysis, that would be his final written document. He's right. very clear. These things don't work. Okay. We can't. Okay. So, so that's why what I'm saying that Eeg is doing and why I'm disagreeing with you here okay. is that okay. that that framing it leaves it as oh yeah we just need to start we just, we just need to do a little boycott here today um or we can buy black or we can bank black or I all see. the things that he specifically says I and where see. do we go from here we should that are not sufficient I so see. then hmm. when e comes back and hmm. says where do we go from here yeah he wrote the book I'm acknowledging he wrote the book. Sure. What did he say in the book? It's irrelevant. Let's talk about the criticism he gets mm, from the book. Mm. How the New York Times and them criticize and, and Andrew Kopkind and them criticize the book. Let's talk about that. And then and how King lost relevance and this and that. And again, not telling us why was he losing relevance? Because he was too radical for them, which is why today West, to the extent he's relevant, uh, um, the other names you mentioned, to the extent they're relevant, they're relevant because they're not doing what King's doing. They're not. They're not advocating. None of them have overtly advocated going left of the Democratic Party. None of them have advocated redistributing to collecting rents, going to the hood. We're going to organize a movement to go to the hood and read. Neither have I. Fair. I'm just just. None of us, us, have said let's put three thousand plus people on the monument in the mall every day and we're going right. to rotate them right. out until the machinery right. of this country right. fails to operate anymore. That's right. what King was doing. That's why the Washington right. Post right. said 90 days before he's killed, this dude is a threat. Right. And that's right. why he has to come back and say, Oh no, no, he's a right. founding father. Get the, get all the f out of here. People are lucky. My kids are home. <laughs> God damn it. We don't have any passion about Martin Luther King audience. You know, we're very indifferent about Martin Luther King. And it's King not to be fair, it's not just about King. My point is it's it's when 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 the when the ideas that make me that honestly bring tears to my eyes. Mm. To be real, I get mm. teary-eyed when I think about mm. and I think they're crocodile tears, because that's what you know, crocodiles tear up when they're about to eat you. That <laughs> that's where that comes from. But 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 I do I get teary eyed when I think about these ideas and these sure. movements, man. I do I do feel I do. And when sure. they, when I see what these motherfuckers are doing, it is so and it's so conscious. And 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 to give you an idea, audience, what Doctor Ball is talking about, Ng has all sorts of space for all the Jesus moments, right? When 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 King's on stage, and a white guy literally comes, gets off of his seat, goes up on stage, and slugs him. Right. And King says, don't press charges, you know, don't, you know, like he has time for that. Right. Ng has time. And all the all the books talk about this when he's signing into a hotel room and a, a white guy goes, are you Martin Luther King? He goes, yes. And he slugs him. Right. He has all the space for that. He has all the space for him calling his girlfriends, but none of the space for talking about the world house. Right. Is that, is that a good summation of your argument? Yeah. I mean, I did a work. I think that's a perfect way of putting it because, you know, when you look I and mean, it's the same thing that is done to people. That's why my one liner had become Dr. King is the most known and least understood figure in human history. Second, maybe only to the historical Jesus Christ. That's a good Because one, I don't think Jesus existed maybe at all at this point, the more research comes out, I'm not even sure he ever existed, but to the, to the extent that he did in the way he did, he's been completely rebranded. Sure. And any radicalism that existed in that story has been reduced. And that's what happens to King. So socialist or socialism is never really mentioned unless connected to democratic socialist. He's, you know, communism is only mentioned in regard to Hoover's concern over King and communism in general and reading reports that communism isn't affecting the civil rights movement. And Hoover gets upset Who gives a fuck that Hoover gets upset <laughs> unless you explain why he's upset. Why is he upset? Because this, because this wonderful Disneyland of a country that you're writing about is a capitalist, imperial, colonial monster, <laughs> and you don't, and and that's what King was trying to figure, deal with, and you don't want, and he's clear he's trying to deal with it as such, and you don't want to, because it's he's a Du Boisian. Did they even talk about Du Bois at all in this book? Du Bois, who's that? I mean, look, the the bottom line is Jesus is, and when they do Du Bois, a right. life. The, the, no, look, no, no, no. When they do Asada Shakur, a life, right, right, right. that's when we're going to have to raise Jared's bail money on BPM. 
because some something is gonna some you know, something. No, I'm just playing. I, I made a point because jokes, it, because of age, right? I said Jesus. I meant Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King in this book is Black Jesus yeah. who redeems America, which is an oxymoron because Jesus was of course black if he was around. But there anyway, but yeah. Oh man, do I have anything else, man? I got, I just, I got you know, a point. You you do all yours, and I'll do all. all I'm done, it. really. I was, in fact, I have a question. You you somewhat a answered it already, but I. So right. I, I let's see. I, yeah, new inf it's the new information in the book erases the old history of of King's radicalism. I think I made that one line or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the one I did want to ask you, and then you know, go ahead and whatever else is is when when. Because I've only read a little bit of Taylor Branch's work mm -hmm. and seen a few of his interviews. Mm -hmm. What are the differences, if any, is significant between what Branch does and and but but and and what E does? Or, or are they more or less, other than the anecdotes piece, are they more or less in terms of the the narrative? Is there any? Is it just Eeg, more or less the same thing? E is the same really, thing? And, and I forgot to mention this in my presentation. E is really just rewriting oats. Oh, okay. And instead of saying that that King is redeeming the South, Eag is ramping it up to say, no, he's Jesus redeeming America. So Eag is just a rewrite of Oates to me with, with better sources, right? Branch, you want to read Branch if you want to go deep into, well, his interpretation of Malcolm X, of the Vietnam War. Branch tries to bring along all of the major streams that happened in that 13 years and contextualizes King. Like there's a lot about Vietnam in Branch. Mm -hmm. There's a mm -hmm. lot about J. Edgar Hoover and COINTELPRO in Branch. There's a lot about Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam in Branch, right? Mm -hmm. Because as a, as a dramatist who's doing serious historical research, Branch um, sets up for King to collide with these folks. So there's all this stuff about Malcolm mm -hmm. so that when Malcolm goes to Selma, that makes sense. Got you. If that makes real sense. quick, yeah. Just real, I want to interrupt. By the way, there is, no. there is very little mention of Branch in terms mm -hmm. of these people who are praising Eeg, as mm -hmm. if people have decided to skip over Branch. I think it's very interesting. Well, because Branch, you just explained why Branch talks about Cointel Pro, Malcolm X, and they, it, and they don't want any of that. But real quick, I want, I want, <laughs> I see my bad. I see Moose's in the chat. I want, I, and I do. I want. I, I'm intentionally being petty. I want Moose to feel some of my pain. <laughs> Because I want by 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 suggesting <laughs> that, that the next in this series is going to be uh, 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 somebody doing Walter Rodney a life. That's 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 what I've, I so I want I want I could see a white I could see a white British guy doing Walter Rodney a life for a real. life I, and I really and and, and and it will it will mention <laughs> that he wrote how Europe underdeveloped Africa, right, right. but only in the context of what white journalists said about the book. Oh. Rodney is no longer, he's gone too far. He's no longer <laughs> relevant. Oh, uh, that's that's how they're going to do it. My bad. Anyway, I couldn't help that. Go ahead. Go ahead. What else did you want to say, man? Well, let me <laughs> go through some nonsense. final notes because I, I mean, I, I got most of the stuff I wanted to say. So let me just make sure that. Uh, and then that I'm going to go watch my baby girl. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean. Oh, oh, here's, thing here's, on the dance here's an floor. important thing for this audience. Here's an important thing for this audience. And maybe this is the last thing we should talk about. Uh, because I know you might have some definite opinions on this. Okay, the way the narrative is structured, right, by all of these books, right, is that Martin Luther King's movement worked. <laughs> right? That, that's, that's what they argue. They all argue that Martin Luther King's movement worked. Okay? And so I thought about this thing that never came up in any of these books that are written. And so I'm going to ask this question to the Black Power media, media audience. Did King's movement only work because McCarthyism crushed the Southern workers' movement? Are E.D. Nixon and Baird Rustin unskilled in moving the masses, as is always implied in these books, that E.D. Nixon and Baird Rustin couldn't do anything because they, they were communists and they didn't have... I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, 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 I just want to be clear. I'm keeping up. Yeah. The first question was because these books argue King's movement was a success. Right. I'm asking. This you're point, asking, is it because right. is, is that success the result of first the crushing of the Southern workers movement? And then, right. okay, and, go ahead. And, and then ahead. I'm saying, cause you know, Baird Rustin and E.D. Nixon are portrayed in these books as like, you know, urban 
sophisticated communists who can't deal with the masses and the king was successful with the masses and all that. And and I'm asking, are E.D. Nixon and Baird Rustin unskilled in moving the masses or were they prohibited? Right? Because we, we, we got to deal with this king movement as a result of the crushing of Paul Robeson. Mm. Right? And the crushing mm. of the the black communist workers and and movements in the South and all that. Because one of the things Robin D.G. Kelly says that makes a lot of sense is he says, you you, be, you keep portraying the South as backwards. The South was so forward, they had to crush it. We are saying by these workers' movements and, and communist movements. So I think it's important to ask this particular question because, because this question is never asked. But that presupposes that King's movement was a success, which King himself says it wasn't. So that's why, like, that that's, again, part of the fraudulence of all this narrative nonsense. King said himself, whoops, I did the best I could. It didn't work. We got to figure out something new, and it has to be more radical than what we've been doing. So that's part of the problem with this founding father narrative, with this King's was successful. We just need to revisit what King had done when King himself said, no, we need to do something more because what I did didn't do it didn't work so i i don't know i do think kelly look kelly i mean this is why these folks are are, are challenged because they they're they're brilliant and they write some important shit but so when kelly talks about when you quote him making or reference him making that point that's brilliant um so I think the question is deserves its own separate investigation, one I'm not prepared for right now, but it, but it can't be based on King having been successful. That would be my only point right now. But I think those are great questions. Other Any than questions that. in the chat? Oh, I don't... I, I, the chat doesn't have questions. They might have manifestos or... <laughs> right. And, and, and corrections. Um, right, right. Any, any but, corrections in the chat? But... Um, not not well I'll, I'll give it a chance I'm, I'm just seeing more of the discussion while um, you're while you're looking through mm -hmm. that I, I just want to point out that one of the conceits of these books on King is that you would believe that Martin Luther King's quest you know within this Western Christian context right at least in the beginning is interesting right because there's always a, a big amount of the book is devoted to his intellectual quest and I keep thinking, you know, Chris Hani's quest is not interesting. Stephen Biko's quest is not interesting. Like all these other people, like their their quest is not. John Henry Clark's quest is not interesting. Where where are all these other quests? And 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 they and America can't deal with that. I mean, I mean, I mean. Remember, they're gonna be they're gonna be places in Florida that's gonna ban this book, <laughs> right? Right. Oh wow! They're banning this book. This book won't. This book won't be in Florida. Not in any schools. Not in library. Why wouldn't this book is not? They don't want any book. They don't want look. They just banned Amanda Gorman's poem. They want all of it gone. They want all of it gone. I'm and not hating. I never hate on the chat, Craig. I'm just. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. I'm being honest. The chat often does no, not chat, have questions. Chat, they have. The chat is they its have own organism. Declarations. No, I, I, I've been in the chat. The chat is his own organism. That's that's that's. And that. I was in the chat last night for Black Miss <laughs> Podcast, and I was doing the same thing. I'm no different. I'm no better. What did right. Kwame Ture say? I'm no different than you. Just more or less. More or less. We're the same. I'm. Just, right. <laughs> I'm a proud member of the chat when I show I'm up. A, uh, yeah. Right, right. And, and, you know, I was being, you know, uh, as pet. Well, first of all, there was a troll in there that got, that got to absorb all of my pettiness last night. So uh, that was, that was, you did? Where are they? Shirley, please revisit them, repost them. I can't, or, or, or better yet, you know what happens? See, see, Shirley, what happens is StreamYard has up, up this game. When you super chat, it automatically becomes a starred and, and unmissable comment. Like Brandon's here. Thank you, Brandon. Dr. Ball, Dr. Burroughs, what are the best books on MLK? They give the full context, not the watered down version. Oh, just that, quickly before, because I know you got a lot to say. Just let me say yeah. one. Go ahead, go ahead. The one of, uh, um, um, oh no, I was about to call it um, The Pursuit of, of Love, Joy James' book, which is great, but that's not the that's not the, what I meant. It's the... Um, Mm -hmm. 
the one I just did the whole the whole. Go ahead, man. I'll find it. Go right, ahead. You, you, you while he's looking, profit, profit of discontent. That's what it is. Ah, okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not read a profit of discontent. All right. This if one here. If you this, this is this is the one. This is brand. It's relatively new. I've done a series of videos on it. It's short, mm -hmm. and it's brilliant because it doesn't do all of the fluff that Eeg and others do, spending hundreds of pages talking about, as Dr. Burroughs has said, infidelities and what happened. I got punched in the face and all that. It deals specifically with his ideas and his radical, his increasing radicalism. It's brilliant. It's a, it's, it's, it, it blows Eeg's book out the water uh, and offers us a version of King that is much more helpful and of value and honest to the man himself. So anyway, go ahead, Dr. Burroughs. Very simply, thank you. Um, the real king can be found in just two books. If you just want to read two books, I'm assuming you just want to read two books. I would choose, where do we go from here? Easily. And I would choose a book edited by James Melvin Washington called A Testament of Hope, The Essential mm -hmm. Writings of Martin Luther King Jr. That's the real Martin Luther King. And the good thing about the Washington book is you get to see King's radicalism as you read it because he starts with his first writings and goes in chronological order. So by the time you get to 68, it's a very different person that you're reading from 55. I'm not supporting the, the platform just showing the book, just to be clear. Just, just showing so people see the book. Uh, I've not read that, but that's great. And it's his writings. It's his writings. And speeches. Oh, so that's always the best for me. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and Sith, Sith Lord, what what book are you talking? What could we do a, a live Q and A on which book? Um, because I'm always down for live Q and As, especially if it brings Doctor Burroughs back. Um, who so they, so ridiculous? I don't know yet. I'm not. I wait for for them to to clarify which one they're talking okay. about. Okay. Are you talking about this book? Okay. I would love to do a live Q and A on this book. Like this, this, like, like this is the one I'm ready for. I can't speak about it, it, and and I'd be ready for this one too, but I don't know if that's what Sith Lord is talking about. But I want you prophet. to pick a book that that Doctor Burroughs would have to come back for. I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read Prophet of Discontent. Thank you for letting me know. Oh yeah, I please read that, and then let's yeah. do a live Q and A for for at Sith Lord's request because I would love to do that, and I'd love to get the authors to join. I, at one point, I thought we were gonna have the authors come through, but. But either way, I'm down for that. And we should make it a, a members only joint. We got to do more of them. But anyway, um, but Shirley, where are your questions? Where are your questions? America is redeemed in this book. Yes, that's if that's your question um, or if that is one of the questions you were you meant to, to, to raise. I mean, it's never I mean, it's 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 yeah. It's 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 another one of those. Yeah, we did the abuses, but then we raised up the abused and let them become famous leaders, and then we made them monuments and told their story. So, aren't we great? <laughs> because Jesus saved our soul. I mean, right? Mm. I mean, that's that's what it is, mm. particularly in terms of the way Aang structures it again. But he puts the label on the box. He just puts mm. the label in the back with the Dick Gregory conversation. Mm. He puts the label on the box. He's, that, that's why he started with the Dick Gregory conversation. Because you remember he says, after Dick Gregory said that, I became very interested in Martin Luther King. And then being a white male, he gets a book contract and then gets to pick and choose among the kings. Being a white male with thing. a track record of sports writing and men's health articles, he not gets, black scholarship. He gets to pick history. and choose from the King research of what he wants to say. <laughs> And that gets approved because it's a white guy, absolutely. And in, and in ten years, boom! I, I'm a king biographer. <laughs> Craziness, but it's it's consistent. So we got a schedule. Can we do that this summer? How how long would it take you to read that book? It's not long. I need to write. I need to write my novel. Well, me, well, me and Pseudo write need to write my novel. To be honest, so I'm let's let's talk about a let's talk about a Labor Day. How about a Labor Day? Damn, we gotta uh, wait till Labor Day. Yeah, I think a Labor Day would be fantastic. I think we could do a Labor Day special, and we could we could is, get the authors. Is not sufficient and don't work the same thing. Yes, to me, yes. That's my answer. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm 
Because if more? work, if if work is, if the goal is liberation, mm. then insufficient doesn't work because you mm. can't insufficiently get an A. Like like I've never given somebody, you know, it like. <laughs> Maybe somebody who didn't deserve one got one, but I'm saying, but 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 it was not because I thought that they did insufficiently get whatever. Maybe I'm, I, I'm there's a better way of putting the point. I mean, I I mean think, maybe maybe it's fair to say that King kept moving the goalpost, right? And he moved the goalpost into radical redistribution of wealth, et cetera, all the things that we we talk about. I mean, I mean, he <laughs> said they said of him, I he he his biggest issue with communism was was religion, the absence of religion. It wasn't anything about anything else. And Garrow, when he's doing his last SCLC meeting, he turns off the tape recorder. Oh, oh Ing, by the way, doesn't doesn't use this for some reason. He turns off the tape reason. recorder. He turns off the tape recorder because he doesn't want this on the official record of the SCLC meeting, and he says. I know socialism is a way, but I can't say that out loud. Yeah. And then he turns the tape recorder back on. This is what the Prophet of Discontent book sort of focuses on as good, a as a as a, as a as a as a as a frame. Uh thank you, Sheiky Baby, for the super chat. Gotta rewatch the the <laughs> the reigning defending undisputed 2020 hater of the year, Dr. Todd Stephen Burroughs. I don't know, man. I think so. So we'll have to come back to this topic because I've been removed from the hater uh, uh hate awards process, but but I have to think that 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 those who will convene the hate awards will have to consider Dr. Burroughs very strong competition this year of, of Diallo Kenyatta. I think Diallo Kenyatta I agree. is, I agree. is <laughs> developing a body of work. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> that is a threat to Dr. Burroughs <laughs> reign on the throne. But uh, I, I hope, man, it's going to be a hell of a it's, that's the heavyweight battle that we need to see this that year is, the heavyweight is, battle. is is the Diallo Dr. Burroughs hate awards showdown. We'll see. The, but the I mean, you know, I, 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 convening I just in make, secret I, location as we speak. <laughs> I just want to make my final little joke here is that, you know, I mean, White American male biographers have it rough, rough because you know how many heroes do they really have among all these imperialists and colonialists and all of that? I mean, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to make a hero out of Alexander Hamilton? I mean, you know, who would do that, right? This is a good question. I so so Moose is asking, curious y'all's thoughts on MLK being revered in places like Cuba, Vietnam, Venezuela, and having more realistic understanding of his ideas in some ways. Right. I've only for those countries I've only been to Cuba and I and 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 my memory and experience with Cuba is that they have a better understanding of damn near every single thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the little the little 10-year-old Russian kid that they were taking care of in some hospital that tore me up in chess in three moves or less uh had a better understanding of everything. Even the kids from other countries that they're taking care of in Cuba for free. Right. Uh, are are you know so so I I tend to think that outside I mean again the United States I really do believe is the most heavily propagandized society in in human history. We are the 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 the, the in the colonial metropole. So the version of of the the technology, the abuse. And of course, Obama during his presidency and one of those those national uh, um, defense authorizations uh, quietly made it legal for the United States to propagandize its own citizens. Don't forget that part. That's another little gift that our first black president gave us. Not that they weren't doing it, but it's now technically legal for them to do it. Uh, we we get all of it. So this is what I'm this is I think News's point is perfect for for coming to an end from my own thoughts on this is that this is this is my whole point we get the most sophisticated nuanced penetrative uh, uh persistent and all-encompassing versions of of all of this and uh, other countries and other parts of the world still have i think more or less and this is an oversimplification of course relative um distance so uh, that that helps them. And then they have other world views that they can point to as well. That, that I mean, King, King is revered. I mean, to be very simplistic, King is revered because he is something that these white writers will never say he is a liberation theologian. OK, 
Real quick, I mean, Dr. Burroughs, we got to honor the ZZ Lion Dad's super chat. I'm late to the conversation. I have a question on autobiographies on X. Dr. Burroughs said autobiographies are not necessarily always accurate. It's a mythos. It's a Bible version of whitewashing. Or it's, it's Autobiographies are what people choose to remember about their lives that they're putting in biological, uh, I'm sorry, biographical order. Like the difference between a, 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 an autobiography and a memoir is a memoir is I just feel like remembering what I remember, right? And they <laughs> do that and however they want to do it and however short it is or whatever. An autobiography is an actual attempt to reconstruct your entire life remembering what you want to remember. But as I as I said in another show, you know, Langston Hughes laughed at the fraudulence of an autobiography because he did too, and they were fantastic. Uh, his two biographies are really adventure journals of his time as a journalist. Like I, I like to joke that, you know, Langston Hughes being a poet is ridiculous. The man was a journalist. And by the way, Dr. Ball, he was a radical journalist. And that is uh, not that's a good I like that point. That is not looked at. And his 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 autobiographies need to be looked at as radical adventure. Ooh, that reminds me of one good bit of hate I meant to throw at you from this book, from this Eeg book. He Eeg yeah, recounts I just want to finish this Langston. Oh, my fault. Oh, my Langston fault. in my talking fault. about the fraudulence of, of autobiography says this is ridiculous because I'm only I'm only writing the good, exciting parts. So it looks like my life is so great and exciting, but it's not. Now, if that sounds like our social media environment, there we have it. But go ahead. Well, I'm I'm actually still working on my my memoir, and it's gonna make me look like the shit. Oh, I'm sure it shall. Wait till wait till you get the version of Jared in this. Jared. I think it's gonna be amazing. Oh my god, Absolutely. it's gonna be and totally accurate. It's totally accurate, but it's I'm about be to totally look accurate. People Absolutely. gonna be like, he is the greatest man ever. I'm trying, I'm coming for that Jesus title myself. There it is. Even if I have to write it myself. No, I'm just playing. So, 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 so you don't but write, we'll write it. <laughs> one, one bit of, one bit of. I was curious. Like, E, I thought it was so hateful of him mm. to throw the Pittsburgh Courier in there and remind us of their critique of King for moving too far to the left. And I know, as 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 the leading black press historian on the planet. That that must have, I don't know, felt like a little a little needle in the gut. It felt like a needle in the gut when I read it. That the that he because he even says even the Pittsburgh Courier, you know, whatever. However, he finished the sentence, but it was it was. And it what was, was that about? Was that about Birmingham and the children, or was that about? It, it was. Uh, it was. I know. think it was his Riverside. Uh, He's moving too far to the left, Vietnam. I'll pull it up here in a second. Yeah. But, but Vietnam yeah. upset a lot of people in the civil rights movement and in the black leadership, of which the black press, remember the black press is the mouthpiece mm -hmm. of the established civil rights leadership. It, it's proud of being that. It's that now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that the Pittsburgh Courier would throw a couple of zingers. And when we deal with the fact that the FBI, as a result of Riverside, asked many newspapers across the country to be as critical of Dr. King as they could. Am I not surprised that the black press is imitating the white press? Absolutely not. That is a feature that you've talked about in the black press for a few years now, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I, of course I can't find it when I'm, it's like, what is, anyway, but they, yeah, it was something about, they, the line that they made, that they made, it, here it is, here it is. Cause that, cause like I said, he says, even, the right. Pittsburgh Courier, right. right? You know, you you little shady little. They're lucky my kids are home today because I'm ready <laughs> to be fired up today. Even the Pittsburgh Courier, a reliable supporter through the years, warned that King does not speak for all Negro America, and besides, he is tragically misleading them. This was this was after the uh, um, Riverside. Um, you know, critique of Vietnam and all of that, where the New York Times, the Washington Post, and all of them, but even the Pittsburgh Courier said he doesn't Martin speak. Martin Luther King was a Nobel Peace Prize winner. He recognized that that made him a global leader. That Riverside <laughs> Church speech is part of his global leadership. <laughs> Jared, that good, then a statue will be created for you. Yes! Right, right. They get, and they're gonna have me looking, looking, looking like I'm an Asian. Like yeah, they, I, knew, I knew you were gonna do that. I knew you. No were disrespect. Do that. I have no problem. I knew it was coming with a Chinese Dr. King, but I'm just I saying. I knew it was coming. You know, anyway. there it is. 
All right, look, good people. I gotta go see my my baby girl do her thing on the dance floor. Uh, and and um, but 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 shout out to you, Doctor Burrows, for 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 um punishing us with the, no, but but helping us, you know, work through all of these histories and biographies and whatnot. And for for all the great work you do at, uh, at Drums in the Global Village .com, which is linked in the show description. Uh, remixers, thank you all for showing up today, and uh, uh, we will look to do this some more. I will look to rope Dr. Burroughs into a live Q&A of the Prophet of Discontent, hopefully before Labor Day, though. That's whack. I think Labor and, Day would be good. I want to point out on my blog, there's a great edited clips of the Gandhi movie with our, our man uh, uh, Krishna B Bhante, you know, our, our, our brother, you know. There's, there's, what, there's, what, what? <laughs> there's some great clips in there that 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 are, are exactly Eve's point, right? It's 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 literally called. Like, let me let me remember the title of the, the blog post because I want you to I want you to, to check out your your brother, our brother Krishna Bonti. Remember that the Western fantasy construction at the core of writing about Martin Luther King, because that Gandhi film, which in itself is a fantasy. I mean, that Gandhi film is. I mean, when you read book real books on Gandhi and what really happened, I mean that this movie is a straight up fantasy, but it's also I believe. A propaganda vehicle for the anti-apartheid movement. That's a whole other discussion we can have. Ooh. Um, Ooh. For the anti-apartheid movement, because because the way the way when it comes out and how it comes out and what it says, you can tell like you know mm. it's, it's thinking about South Africa, right? But um, but the way those clips are put together by this editor, whoever did this, is exactly Ing's point. Ing Ing probably watched that film a couple of times and said, "Yes, this is exactly how I want to portray him." But anyway, Dr. Um, Ball, go, go be no, with your daughter. No, thank, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you, you. Thank you for the patience. Once again, I feel like after another discussion with you. Did you call bank? I call game. <laughs> game. <laughs> it, it's another one. So thank you, folks. If you've seen this uh, later on, if we didn't get to something, obviously. Put it in the comments. And uh, we will. Message. Get the message I meant to say, and uh, look to respond and come back and do do our thing next time. But thanks, as always. Peace to you if you're willing to fight for it. Like Fred Hampton used to say, "We'll catch you next time here at I Mix What I Like and throughout the BPM platform." Peace, Doctor Burroughs. Catch you next time as well. Thanks, everybody. Peace. I mix what I, I mix, like. What I, I like is I like. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Whatever you got. What I like, 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 what I like.